So today I'm here to talk about the science fiction fantasy I've been reading over the last few weeks and I'll be honest, I'm not sure how this video is going to go because I read a lot of really confusing books that I'm going to have a terrible time trying to summarize on camera. I picked up some books that I thought would be straightforward, turned out to be really confusing, and then to round with this video I thought I would pick up more confusing books and then those books ended up being more straightforward than I would have thought, which kind of confused me more. So let's attempt to talk about this, I guarantee this video is going to be a hot mess, but if you want to stick around and discuss these books with me, I appreciate it. All right, let's go. First, let's talk science fiction starting with There Is No Antimimetic Division by Quantum. And this is a little book that was sent to me by my friend Whitney. And this is an indie author, an indie book that I've been really interested in for quite a while and was really excited to finally get a copy of it because it wasn't available on Kindle Unlimited or through my library. And so this is a story that, as every book I'm going to describe on this list, is very hard to summarize. It is almost a story that it begins to read like a collection of short stories and then moves into more of a somewhat cohesive narrative. The idea behind this book is that there are certain things that are anti-memetic. So there are certain ideas or concepts that by their very nature lend themselves to not being shared. So they're basically the opposite of what we describe as memes. I thought the actual premise and setup was really neat because I didn't really understand the title until I went into it. And as the book suggests, there is possibly or not possibly a division to handle all this. So in terms of a setup, I thought it was really, really kooky and funny. And I definitely enjoyed the first couple of chapters. Just again off the wall didn't quite know where it was going and again it always read just like little vignettes which for me I think was the best way to experience this book as it went on it felt like it was trying to have more of a cohesive narrative which almost is my criticism of the book. I believe this started out as an internet project that kind of got turned into a book and I can kind of see that in the narrative style where they had these little funny tidbits and were like, oh, let's turn this into a book. And it almost works best as tiny tidbits. I know other people who love this book. I have friends that have this as a five-star read for them. It wasn't for me. I enjoyed the experience of trying it. Wasn't entirely successful, but just a really cool book to try out. Next, let's talk about A Deepness in the Sky by Vernon Vinci and this is the same author who wrote A Fire Upon the Deep and this is actually a loose prequel to that book and so technically if you do want to start here I do believe in my opinion you can others might disagree in the comments but it works enough as a standalone. I was very eager to pick this one up because I've seen this book on many people's favorite books of all time and actually rated higher than A Fire Upon the Deep which I read last year really liked it was one of my favorites so naturally I was interested in going to this one. This one is set I believe a thousand years prior and it follows humanity right as they're about to meet aliens and there's so much going on within the story and I will be honest I started reading this book and then I put it down I started reading again and put it down and mostly what I was missing is I didn't have the same aha amaze experience that I did with the original book and I don't know if it's the space I'm in I will revisit this book again in the future I will keep you posted and I do re-review something if my opinions on it drastically change on my channel but I just didn't really connect with this one there was nothing I found critically wrong with it but it lacked a connection to me in a way that I found interesting instead I found it to be just a fine science fiction book, which I know people are probably throwing tomatoes at their screens right now. I know this book is so adored. So to try to redeem myself, let me at least point out to those of you that love this book that they do have a new uh, cover that is out from Tor, Tor Essentials. So if you're looking for a new copy of this book, there is one available. I did receive a review copy and I wish I loved this book more. So again, maybe I'll revisit it and tell you about it more then. Next, we have Vert by Jeff Noon. And as you can see from this cover, this is is a new edition. It's a 30th anniversary cover to re-release this book. I was very interested in this one to receive it from the publisher Angry Robot because it is not available in my library system and it wasn't available digitally at least the time I was looking at it and so having a chance to actually go and read a book like this. A lot of people have told me that this is a great weird science fiction author that I have to check out. Several people recommend this book to me and so I was so excited to finally get into it. Went into it not knowing anything about the synopsis or plot and after reading the book, I can say that I still don't know a lot about the synopsis or plot. It kind of read like gibberish to me. Don't get me wrong, there are sentences in this book, there are paragraphs, there are section points, but this book did not work with my brain. I'm coming to the conclusion that weird science fiction is rarely my thing. Some of the more commercial works, things like Jeff Vandermeer, sometimes will work a little bit better, but I just didn't understand the point of this book and I feel so bad because again there's people who I'm sure are watching this love this book and think I'm stupid but I did not get along with this book. I did not find it entertaining or kooky or 
anything. I just had no reaction to this book other than what are these words supposed to mean? What is the purpose behind this book? What is its intention? And it just did not click with me, which is horribly embarrassing. Again, another book that'll show off. If you love this book, look at this beautiful edition. But in terms of my personal enjoyment with the book, it was lacking. Next up, I have this bind up of Robotech by Jack McKinney. This is a book that I received from Titan Books. And I was interested in this one. It sounded like a really fun premise. It's set in this future where humanity is almost extinct after these civil wars. However, there is this thing that happens and humanity or humans possibly get these gifts and then the world kind of goes from there. This is just a really entertaining page turner of a military science fiction book that I just found super entertaining. It reminded me a lot of the kind of military anime sci-fi cartoons I used to watch and really made me want to get back into all of that. I just had a good time reading it. Again, this is technically a bind up so there's three stories within it and as a bind up it's fairly long but you can imagine with three stories in here you kind of go through them bang 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 which is exactly how I did. I just blew through them. I found them easy. The characters you can imagine are not the most complex but I found them entertaining. The story just kind of flies along. Basically it was what I was looking for in an otherwise slumpy mood and I had a really good time with this one. I will admit I did not realize and this is completely my bad that I did not realize until I went to review this book that this is a media tie-in. I kind of had heard the term Robotech but it didn't mean a lot to me so I read this book not realizing that there was a context behind the world and so I can now give you the unbiased review that you can absolutely go into this book and enjoy it without having watched or consumed any of the Robotech universe and in fact I think it works perfectly fine. I can only imagine other layers of what you might also get out of this book if you know the universe already but without it, without that context, we're totally fine. This is honestly one of my favorite reads of this video because I just had a good time with it. And let's be honest, it wasn't confusing. It made a lot of sense, even without the media tie-in. Next is Yours for the Taking by Gabrielle Korn. And this is a sci-fi thriller that I probably could have put with my dark fiction, but I decided to include it here. It's a new release coming out where we follow this young woman who is living in this kind of post-apocalyptic world. There is a love interest of another woman and we follow them as they are dealing with the fallout of all this. This story really deals with a lot of the challenges and addresses the ideas surrounding economic class and gets kind of the idea that at the end of the world, those who have the privilege to escape that world versus those that are forced to live at the bottom. And so I do appreciate some of the conversations that were happening around it. In terms of the story, the reason I mentioned that it didn't necessarily have to be in my science fiction video is that the science fiction is more in the background of the story. It is a setup for this post-apocalyptic future. But at its core, this is much more a relationship story. It is really the story between these individuals. And while I appreciate diversity, representation, all of that, I am not someone who is seeking out a lot of romantic interest in my books and so this one I should have looked at a little bit deeper had more of a romantic relationship angle to it than I found to be interesting. It was fine but I definitely read young. It isn't a piece of adult fiction but it definitely had that YA or young adult appeal that I'm just not looking for. So I found this one to be pretty average. Didn't really say anything new, nothing I haven't read before. And so it wasn't one that really held my attention or was that memorable, if I'm honest. Next, let's talk about The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood because again, I have to continue to read Margaret Atwood in order to keep my Canadian citizenship. I know it's a long running joke that no one actually finds that funny. But this is a story that is honestly neither science fiction nor fantasy, but I'm gonna stick it in this video anyway because it was simply very confusing. If you follow my channel, you'll know that I really love Margaret Atwood. She is a beautiful writer with some really creative ideas. And those are some of the things I loved about this book. This is a book that is so hard to describe and summarize on camera because it is set over multiple timelines and you follow the different characters and the story and plot just shifts around as the story progresses. It's a bit of an epic family saga. In the very beginning of the story it starts in the 1940s where this one sister has lost her other sister in this car accident and we follow them afterwards but again we kind of follow them through different points in time. The character work is so good again the writing is so good and the story is so imaginative and yet weird. It's a story that I feel like in another author's hands you would hear me ranting about it, hating it. It wasn't quite a five star read for me, I'll be honest. It kind of went over my head in ways that I didn't really understand quite what she was doing in certain places of the plot. 
but it was so engaging and so well done that even in my confusion, I had a great time with this book. I definitely want to reread it and hopefully kind of put those pieces together more. While this mostly reads like a piece of historical fiction, there are these strange speculative elements that come up. There is a science fiction like explanation for how humans arrived on Earth, and it just gets really weird and strange in places. But like I said, I had a great time reading this book. It's not short, it's long, it's verbose, but I just want to spend time with the characters, try to puzzle out the plot, and like I said, maybe it's the Canadian in me, maybe it's in my blood, but no matter what, I just love what Margaret Atwood writes, and I'm continuing to enjoy her work, and hopefully continue to find new favorites. Next, let's talk about some fantasy, starting with Brother to Dragons, Companion to Owls, and this is a piece of urban fantasy, for lack of a better word, that follows a young woman, Sarah, who ends up getting released from an asylum. And then in order to have a place in the world, she ends up moving in with this pack of wolves, for lack of a better description. It is a book that is so strange. I was gifted this book from a subscriber and I ended up emailing them when I started this book, basically saying, what am I reading? I originally thought this book was more horror and it definitely has those strange elements to it. But basically reading the book, it is so surreal and bizarre and fantastical in a really strange, weird way that I wasn't entirely sure what box I was supposed to put this book into. I just didn't really know where to set my expectations if I was supposed to think you know, or just take the book too literally. And so I found myself just really struggling with this book. I will admit it didn't work as well as I would have liked it to for especially a book that was gifted. You always hope that it's gonna be a new favorite. And this book was just strange. But again, I will always give credit and appreciate people who see and find a weird book and say, this book is really messed up and think Rachel would probably like that. I take that as a compliment. I still love finding underhyped gems. This one wasn't for me, but I love a book that does weird things. So at least it was a good attempt. Speaking of weird books that were gifted to me, I also read The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. And I think this is a bit of a booktube darling that I always see people talk about on their channels and they always give really weak, poor synopsis. And so I don't really know what the book is about. And I am going to do the same thing to you all. So this is a piece of fantasy that has horror-ish elements, thriller-ish elements. It follows a person who ends up living in this commune, this library setting with this person that they call father, and he raises them and teaches them about the books in this library. This book has some mystery layers to it, which honestly I found to be the most interesting part of the story. I always hear about people talking about how this book is so weird and so fantastical and so strange. I almost would have preferred this book if it had been more of a straight up police procedural and kind of just gone through the investigation because when they were actually dealing with like fingerprints and evidence and all of that, that was where I felt most comfortable. And probably that again comes from my bias that this video is a big exercise in explaining the fact that I don't think I love weird fiction as much as I think I do. I think in my mind, I'm like, oh, weird fiction, that sounds great. I love messed up things. But when I mean messed up things, I'm realizing that the strict definition of weird fiction is not what I'm looking for. And that's kind of where this book lost me is it felt very ambitious. It looked like it was trying to do a lot of different things and it didn't entirely succeed, at least in my reading experience of doing that. It's a very long book and maybe if it had been a more tailored down experience, this was a book that was gifted to me as an audio via Audible and I really appreciate that from William who sent this book. And again, it's one that I want to love so badly because you were very excited to send it to me and have me experience the book. So naturally I'm biased to want to love it more, appreciate things it was doing, but didn't love it as much as I wish I did. I'm sorry. Next, I read Daughter from the Dark, and this is the same author who wrote Vita Nostra, another kind of booktube darling. This is an unrelated work, and so it reads as a standalone. It's a piece of, let's say, urban fantasy that follows this man, this young man that is a DJ. One day, this young girl, I believe around 10 years old, follows him home. He ends up rescuing her, and then she goes to stay at his place. This is a book that had so much potential as someone who loves creepy kids stories and it just did not do what I was hoping it would do. It had that setup and premise and again it's one of these stories or times where I find the narrative to be uneven. I'm not entirely sure if the author was very purposeful in where they wanted this book to go. It felt like they were trying to do a few different things and in doing lots of things, I felt like they did none of it successfully. And so I was overall really disappointed by this book because again, the premise of it, creepy kid follows me home, love it. 
but it just was not what I thought it was going to be from that synopsis, and I'm not quite sure what it ended up being, if that makes sense. It is a translated work, so I always do wonder if something gets lost in that translation, but given the fact that I also did not love Vina Nostra, I think that this author may not be for me. I believe it's actually a pair of authors, um, but one that I thought I would love, hoped I would love, and didn't. Can you see a pattern in this video? Finally, I read Gardens of the Moon by Eric Larson, and I will admit I decided to get into Malazan. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing the series right, because I've heard that this is the most confusing, complex fantasy series you can ever possibly read. I only read the first book, and I will admit that I actually didn't find it that confusing. It is a military fantasy book. There are a multitude of different characters, and I can see the fact that there is a lot going on. You are thrown into the world, so the author does not spend a lot of time explaining every little bit of the world. Instead, you have to kind of figure out and orient yourself as you move from different perspectives and kind of work out how it all fits together. But while I would in no means call this the easiest fantasy book I've read, I would say it's relatively on par with most of the epic fantasy I've been reading and reviewing on my channel recently. And so it's a story that, to me, actually made sense as you go along with it. It's not a beginner fantasy book. It's a large scale book that I'm sure you can get more out of by rereading and all of that. But if you're intimidated to start this series, if you really want to read a epic military fantasy and are just so intimidated because of all the hype online, I tell you to go for it. Now I do have the caveat that I've only read the first book, so there is the possibility that it goes way off the deep end in the second book. I do plan on continuing the series at some point in time, but I realize that this story really focuses on the military aspect of this world, and that is just not a focus of fantasy that I personally enjoy. I could see myself if I got if I spent enough time and really got into this world in a different mood and different time, I'd like to think that I could really enjoy going through these longer books, but I didn't really get hooked in in a way that makes me want to spend hours and hours of my reading time focusing on this right now, so I'll come back to the series at a later point in time. I'm glad I got my toes wet by trying out the first book and really kind of took the edge off of my feelings of being intimidated by the series. It's big, it's complex, it's definitely one you want to invest your time and focus in and not rush through with any distractions, but it's a good fantasy series. I just don't think I'm going to be reading it right now. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to know of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? I do recognize that I maybe had some more mediocre two, three star reads in this video, more than I would like to have. I always get comments on videos like this saying, geez, I wish that you only read and reviewed four and five star books. And my answer to that is I wish I did too. If I could purposely and perfectly read only the really good stuff all the time, that would be great for my channel. That'd be great for my reading life, but as many of you can probably recognize, reading has ebbs and flows, and the challenge with having a channel like this is you get to watch those in relatively live time. You get to follow me through those slums, which is definitely what I'm in right now. I've just read a lot of books that didn't really work for me in different ways. However, I know what's coming in my TBR, and it's going to be fantastic. I have some great books coming that I have high hopes will be favorites of the coming year, so stay tuned for that. And if you want to stick around, subscribe to this hot mess. I appreciate it. You can give me a thumbs up on this video. You can drop a comment. Even if it's just an emoji, find an emoji that is confusing or a hot mess. I'd appreciate it. And if you want to hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss a video from me. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>